Welcome to the Choice, Change and Action podcast, where you get to choose, change and take action to create a different today and a different future. These are my stories of choice, change and action, along with the phenomenal guests I have on here. From a really young age, I've always desired to create a change in the world. The planet has been a constant inspiration to me and Access Consciousness has shown me the tools to know that anything is possible and I keep choosing. What are you going to choose? Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, my goodness. How do we get so lucky? So I am Simone Melissa's, and this call today is, is your body your friend or your foe? So first, I want to say thank you so much for being here. And if you're listening to this now or you're listening to this, you know, later, listen to it over and over again. It's like share it with whoever the hell you desire, because I would like all of you, I'd like everyone in the world to have a freedom that they can have with their body. Because what is the one thing that has never left you? What is the one thing that you wake up with every single day? What is the one thing that you go to bed with every single night? What is the one thing that you most probably judge every single day? Yeah, your body, your sweet, sweet body. So I'm probably going to tell you some, a few, you know, stories here and there about myself. Just hopefully it maybe helps you as well. Um, I am now uh, 54 years of age. I'm like, I know I'm shocked too. You're like, what? I thought she was 25. No, 54. (laughs) But here's the interesting thing is um, I do love Facebook and in one um, area of, you know, when it does that flashback and it shows you when it goes, here you were five years ago, here you were, you know, eight years ago. And I'm like, wow, when I look at that, even one year ago, I am happier today than I was a year ago. I feel better in my body than I did a year ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. I have more of a sense of peace in my world. And I also get this is just the beginning. So don't wait till you're 54. And I was saying to someone the other day, you know, if someone had said to me in my 20s, hey, you should probably blah, blah, I would have gone, yeah, whatever. And I would have totally and utterly ignored it. I have been there, done that. I have abused my body so much to the point of I took a lot of drugs in my 20s. That's what I was doing in my 20s because For me, I knew that there was something different in the world. I didn't know what it was, but I looked around the world and went, this cannot be it. The trauma and drama that people are choosing, the bitching and the moaning and the judgment that people are choosing. I was like, "This, there's got to be something different. And for me, I've always been, I guess, in, in communion with the earth. And every day I ask to be more in communion with the earth. So the earth was sort of like my best mate. And I was actually lucky enough to grow up in Sydney, right on the edge of Sydney. And Sydney is a huge city. It's as big as Los Angeles. And I was right on the edge. So we had National Park. So my playground after school was a National Park. Like you'd, you know, run down through through the National Park. And we had this huge, big, beautiful bay that we would swim in. We had a boat. You'd go water skiing, whatever. But I grew up with nature. And so for me, nature always gave me more of a sense of myself, even though I didn't have much of a sense of myself because I was always looking at other people and attempting to reference what they were choosing as somewhere where where, where I could choose. Okay. So I'm going to talk for a little bit, um, Rehab, and then I might take questions at the end because there's a little bit that I want to get through. So, um, but thank you. You can keep your hand up if you want. Um, so there was a yeah, there was a lot of things that I thought the lawnmower was about to start. Like, no, <laughs> um, there was a lot of things that I ignored about what I was aware of. So first of all, how much have you been ignoring of the whispers of consciousness from nature, from the earth, from the planet, and from your body? How much have you been avoiding? And everything at that is we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. That is the access consciousness clearing statement. 
if you don't know about that we're going to i'm sure we're going to have a link in the in the email or wherever we send people to <laughs> the telegram thread and uh and it's but you can go to theclearingstatement.com and it's myself and dr dane here talking about it so basically it's like pressing the delete button of everything because if you look at how did you grow up okay how did you grow up and what was your point of view with your body? I mean, I'm lucky enough at the moment, I can see my amazing Oracle, Tiffany, and her beautiful son, Silas. And Silas is so incredibly lucky to have grown up with a mum and dad who have been empowering him since he was in utero, basically, even before that, I would say. So, but how many of you were lucky enough to have that? Because I know I wasn't. You know, it was... We were told what we should eat, what is the correct thing to eat. You know, we were told what it is that we should be doing, et cetera, rather than being asked a question. So everything that you've been told throughout your entire life, from every single person that you looked at as an authority on how you should be with your body and all the lies that you were told, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. And... Do not trust me. Don't trust anyone but you. Okay. You'll know. You know when you hear information or you you hear information or you see information or you touch information, whatever that is, you know what works for you. Okay. And if you're in total communion with your body, you hear it even louder. Gosh, there's so many things I want to talk about because how many of you have been choosing from conflict with your body everywhere that you've been choosing from conflict with your body not in communion with your body where you destroy and uncreate it right and wrong good and bad pock and pot all nine shorts boys proverbs and beyonds now that's as simple as you know one of the tools we have in access consciousness is <clears throat> asking your body what it would like to eat i mean how many of you were taught you know, what you should eat. I mean, I love it. I grew up with the five food groups and it was like this pyramid, right? And it was like, that's what you're meant to eat. Like this many pieces of, you know, fruit, vegetable, protein, dairy, blah, 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 that whole sort of thing. It was very popular to have a glass of, you know, milk every day. Like that's what I grew up with. And then years later, it was like that pyramid flipped and then that's how you're meant to eat. And you're always being told this is what you're meant to eat. I remember I love oranges, right, as a fruit. And then one stage, there was this big scandal that oranges were creating cancer and it was like, no more oranges. And it was like, are you serious? Like how many people have you listened to about what you should eat and about how you should move your body? That is a lie. And everything that that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. I mean, for example, let's take food. It's like, if you are someone who thinks a lot, like you, you know, you're just always, your mind is just going, 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 going. You are probably going to require more sugar. Your body doesn't care how it gets it. It doesn't care if you eat a candy bar, if you eat a whole watermelon and get sugar, you know, your body requires sugar, okay? Because you are such a thinker. And so like, notice how there's, um, there's days where you want to eat everything. And the next day you're like, I'm not hungry at all. Well, who brought in the rule breakfast, lunch, and dinner? All of us, all of us, all of us are different. Every single body is different. Every single body is different. Yeah, Holly said, I'm a grazer. I love it. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a grazer as well. And when I had a stepson, <laughs> for like from he was like from five to um 13, so it was eight years. I was always like, oh, we have to have dinner again. Because I'm not a big, huge dinner person. And I was like, you know, we, we had dinner last night. Isn't that enough? You know, and it's like, and then you're dealing with being a parent and then going, oh, do I have to feed you again? You know, I once saw this meme and there's this woman sitting on the couch going, but you had dinner last night, you know? And I was like, how many nights can we give him pizza before it's considered abuse? You know, but there's this rhythm that you're supposed to be in with food. And I love, this is what I used to do with my stepson. He had a snack drawer and it was a snack drawer that he could reach so he could get to it. And it had like crisps and had um, different things that he liked, like different sweet things or whatever. Like it was filled with things that most of the time you would grow up going, that's wrong to have that, okay? 
No, he would come home from school and we'd be hungry and it's like, you want a snack. Do you know what? About eight times out of 10, he would ask me, can you, pre can you prepare me, you know, one of his favorite snacks, which was tomatoes and cucumber chopped up with salt and olive oil. And that's what he would choose. But because he had the choice of everything, he wasn't making something right and he wasn't making something wrong. So even here right now, apparently we're talking about food this morning. So how many of you have made what you put in your mouth and what you digest right or wrong? I love it because I can see all the people who are eating here and it's like we're talking. <laughs> so everything that you've made, what you are eating or what you put in your mouth, let's do that too because that's got to do with, oh, yeah, sex. Will you destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Wow. Apparently a lot. What if you could eat anything you desire, but you did it from choice and not from judgment? That you literally followed the energy. Like I am not a sweet eater. That is generally not what my body chooses. And I'd say for the past 10 days, I've been going through a lot of changes. I'm like, oh, this is what it's like when people talk about craving sugar at night. And I've been craving sugar. And because I don't really have much sugar in my house, I've been hitting up the Nutella. <laughs> it's like the sweetest thing I could find because I don't think, oh, go to the shop during the day and buy something for myself, you know. So, but I'm noticing that that is what my body is requiring at the moment. I'm very much a salt eater. I can eat, you know, I'm like, hey, give me a cheese platter, some olives, some pickles, you know, that sort of thing. So acknowledge what your body is asking for and also acknowledge when your body changes. Like last night I poured myself a glass of wine because I just was like, oh, I really feel like a glass of wine. I drank half a glass of wine and then I tipped the rest of it out. How many of you would drink the whole glass of wine because you poured it? You don't want to waste it. Like what did you grow up with? You know, the clean plate club. I always love it when we talk about, because we're so international. You know, when I was growing up, we were told we had to eat all our food on our plate because there were starving people in India. And then you ask the Indians what they were told and they were told there were starving people in um, Africa. You know, it's like everyone has a country that their parents told them where there were starving kids, you know. And so that's, and, and my brother, I remember at one stage, he said, name two to my mother being very cheeky. It was like, so we have to eat the boiled Brussels sprouts that you gave us and your very overcooked meat because there's starving kids in India. Try and make sense of that. So everything at that is time to God's eating. Everywhere that food became a punishment and this like a force against your will where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Okay, so let's do something here. Let's, can if you can, if you're driving, don't. <laughs> Just put your hands on your body somewhere and just say, hi, body. Hi. Wow. Notice how it's taking you a little longer to be a little bit present with it. There's a lot of bodies on here too. Take a big breath. Like through your whole chest and your whole torso. And then as you let that breath out, just perceive every single molecule in your body. Because you literally have trillions of cells and those cells are changing every nanosecond. And they don't, they're not judging you. They will handle whatever you choose. Trust me, I have given my body hell over the years and it handles it and wakes up and goes, Hi. <laughs> so let's do something. Everywhere that you have been abusing your body or choosing in conflict and not listening to it, and every, all the lies that you've brought that you must choose from conflict rather than being in communion. Will you destroy and uncreate it? Times a godzillion. Godzillions are only a number big, so big that only God knows. It's a joke. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, privates and beyonds. My God, my hands are so hot on my body. That's all your fault. My body heats up when I'm uh, facilitating and talking to so many people. I'm like, whoo! Okay. So now you've got your hands on your body. Your body's here, okay? So I'm going to just describe something that we talk about in Access Consciousness too is this is your body. Well, this is my body. 
You've got your body, okay? That's your body. This is your body unique to you, okay? Even if you're a twin, your body is unique to you, okay? Nobody has your body. Now what I would like, you have your body. This is your body. And so many people talk about being grounded. It's like, or, you know, being inside your body. I'm going to ask you to do the complete opposite. I'm going to ask you to expand out because you the being have access to the entirety of the world. And you know this by when all those moments in your life where you, you know someone's about to knock at the door, you know someone's about to call, you get that energy of your somewhere and you're like, you know what, I've got to go because you're an infinite being. And that's what we refer to in access consciousness is you are an infinite being, you are not a finite being. Admittedly, a lot of you try and pretend that you're pathetic and a finite being, okay, Give yourself, when you choose that, it's like give yourself 10 minutes and go, okay, was that fun? No, I'm going to change it. If I was choosing infinite being, what would I choose here? What would I be? And everything that doesn't allow you to acknowledge what you can be in every moment where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Okay, so now I want you, the being, to expand out across the entirety of the world. Now, if you're like, how the hell do I do that? It's like, just practice. And one way you can practice, which I quite often will do this, even when I'm just lying in bed, is um, is just expand out to the entirety of the world. I used to be worldwide coordinator of access for like 18 years was my quote unquote job. And at the beginning, I was like, how the hell do I be aware of the world? Because I was pretty good at being aware of the country I was in or a few different you know, areas but the world. So I used to, and do this with me, is just picture the globe, right? The world. And wherever you are in the world, just expand your awareness out across the entirety of the globe, and entirety of the world. You're know, like one of those spinning ones so that you perceive every country, every ocean, every sea, every lake, every mountain. Oh, everywhere that you are avoiding that much awareness where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. What if you decided would happen if you avoided that much awareness? And everything that that is, where you destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. You do not have to have been in Australia to tap into this. My house, it's like got, the, I can hear the ocean right now, it's across the road. Tap into the ocean here, the waves crashing. And then go somewhere like, you know, Northern Lights, you know. Just because you haven't seen the Northern Lights doesn't mean you can't perceive it. Doesn't mean you can't receive it. And then how many deserts are you aware of in the world? I'm actually off to the Australian desert tomorrow morning for six days. And I'm very excited. This big, beautiful rock called Uluru, although most tourists know it as Ayers Rock. And it's considered one of the most the um, places in the world um, where creation started, 650 million years old. You walk around that rock and you go, tell me about your problem again. 650 million years old. I'm sorry, what happened? You broke your relationship up? Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> the universe is a much bigger, greater place than your problems. Your problems are not real, okay? And you know what? It starts with the communion that you can have and be with your body. So everything at that is times a godzillion. Everywhere that you've been refusing that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Big breath, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, COVIDs and beyonds. Okay, so every morning, first home play, okay? Every morning when you're in bed, say hi to your body. Hi, body. Hello. And it's like wiggle your toes. It's like quite often I'll just, you know, move my ankles around or... You know, put your hands on your knees and it's just be like, hey, knees. How many people have a quote-unquote problem with their knees? Well, have you been just judging that or a quote-unquote problem with your lower back or wherever? Everywhere that you think you have a problem, okay, everywhere that you think you have a problem with your body where you have a quote-unquote pain, apparently I like saying quote-unquote today, where you have a pain in your body, I want you to put your attention on it and ask, what gift is this? What gift is this pain? 
And you're like, no, 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 no. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand the pain I'm going through. Okay, guys. Recently, I had to fill in this form. I went to see this network, Cairo, and they asked me for all the different things, accidents or things like you'd had. And I was like, damn, I've broken a few bones or I've been in a few accidents. Like when you start to write down your whole life to give them the information, very interesting. And it's like every single time I have done something like um, fractured a bone or, you know, ended up in a hospital or something like that, it's always been a gift every single time every single time, every single time, your body is giving you information. What gift is this? And everything that do doesn't allow you to perceive, know, be and receive the gift, because you as an infinite being have the ability to perceive, know, be and receive, we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Nice. Okay, so um, I love it. I mean, last time she just wrote nothing. She was too lazy to name everything my body went through. Yeah, but it's it's really, for me, it's been very interesting to observe that because so um, a few weeks ago I ended up in hospital in an ambulance because I couldn't move. And, you know, they gave me like the green whistle, morphine, codeine. I was completely out of it. That was very interesting, the whole drug thing as well. Um, but I was grateful because I got a CT scan and I wouldn't have got a CT scan before. And I've had like, you know, lower back problems like so many people do. And I was talking to a friend of mine last night and he was saying who he's like fit and healthy. And he was at the gym and his trainer put it, drew him aside and he said, hey, he said, you have to look at how you're moving. He said, you are using your lower back for everything. You've got a whole body. And that is the one thing that I have been engaging in in the past few weeks because with my CT scan, I can see some things that with my lower discs that are not the way they're supposed to be. Like the doctor literally said to me, you're not a dolphin. And I was like, what? I was on drugs going, maybe I am a dolphin, you know, because the, um, the discs were dissipating. Now, medical doctors will tell you that you can't create new discs. Well, I'm not vested in the outcome, but every single night, as I'm going to bed, I'm putting my hands on my lower back and asking for to generate my discs, okay? But the thing that I found out is every movement I've been doing, I've been moving from my back. And if you're a tall person, you'll know what I'm talking about too. You've got it, you know, you've always been taught bend down, etc. When you get out of the shower, a lot of tall people will put their leg up somewhere in order to dry themselves. Well, I've been putting my leg up and bending over like a candy cane, you know, like that. It's like you don't bend like a candy cane. You're meant to bend like this, you know, from your from your hips. And can I tell you, my glutes in the last two weeks have been so sore from the way I've been picking stuff up now. And um, this guy, this physio that I've been seeing, he's like, I need your glutes to be strong like Arnie's. So that's my saying at the moment, glutes strong like Arnie. Okay, so next time you see me, glutes strong like Arnie. But using my all of my muscles, and I've been learning so much about every single muscle, ligament, nerves, like or everything in my body. So for me, what occurred a few weeks ago is being such a gift to get me to where I am now and then to where, where else, like where are we going from there? And a lot of the different things that I have gained awareness from, and one of them is choosing from conflict. So I want to talk about that with you. Hopefully this will help. Is two things that showed up for me in the last however many years one when gary was talking to me about choosing what my body would like to eat let's talk about the food thing again and i was at this restaurant and gary douglas is the founder of access consciousness and we're at this restaurant and i was ordering something and if you do like look at a menu and look at it and say body what would you like and if you get okay i want the chicken and you're sitting with four people and three is a mortar chicken then maybe take another check in and go hey body do you want chicken or are you just aware of everybody else's body okay and then have a look at the menu. And for me, things ping. Like it's like, you know, when someone says I'm getting the fish and you're like, I can't even see the fish because your body's like, I don't desire the fish. You know, I want this or something. So what I looked at was I ordered this meal and it had this sauce on it. And I noticed and I said, oh, I really love this sauce. And Gary said, does your body like it? And I got this big no. And I went, wow, it was so interesting for me to perceive I liked the sauce, 
but my body did not. And how many of you have, you know, scenarios where you eat something and then you feel bloated and you're like, I just ate the smallest thing. Like it's not like, okay, I ate a lot of food, but look at what did you eat? Was your body actually desiring that? Okay. And then, and don't judge it. This is not about judgment. This is about being in question and more communion with your body. Okay. So for me, that was such a, an eye-opening thing. It's like, oh, I like this. Does my body actually like this? Same thing as like having a glass of wine. The amount of times I would have poured a glass of wine, drank it, tasted friggin' amazing and awesome. The second that wine starts to taste like vinegar or doesn't taste as good, your body doesn't desire anymore. And how many times have you overridden that? Yeah, plenty. I've overridden it a lot going, come on, we'll just have one more. All right, we'll swap drinks. We'll have a cocktail. You're like that. <laughs> and it's like, but you're choosing in conflict, right? So, and then in the last couple of weeks, um, yeah, and someone said, I wonder, is that the same as food allergies like gluten or dairy? Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that I did. I'm not saying you have to do this. If, if it rings true for you, like I said, you choose you, okay? I wanted to actually see if I could stop drink, if I, cause I love, I love a glass of wine, right? And I have not been drinking nearly as much, like, in the past year I'd say which is interesting because what not choosing from conflict okay so I did this thing called whole 30 there's a whole Facebook page group on it there's cookbooks there's everything whole 30 eliminates um alcohol gluten dairy wheat sugar um a couple of other things it's very eating fresh with nothing else in it so I did it because I was like I wonder if I can eat like if I can do 30 days with no alcohol a friend of mine too was like, you're humanoid. Like if you've done, you know, I did 18 days of this and then I ended up, you know, eating and having a cocktail. So, but the piece that I became aware of was the alcohol was fine. I realized my body wasn't that fond of gluten or dairy. So when I ate, and I've known for years, I love cheese, but my body doesn't necessarily love cheese, but my body will show me now when it's okay to eat cheese. And this is what I would like everyone to get to is this having your body be your friend and not your enemy, not your foe. And I became so used to choosing from conflict, it became normal. So how many of you have created choosing from conflict with your body as the new normal? And everything that that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, probits and beyonds. Where do you choose from conflict? You might have an ease with food, but do you choose from conflict with moving your body? <clears throat> you know, some people are more action moving people and other people are not. One of the things I've been practicing recently is like yesterday I went to Pilates and it was such a good session. And I my body was like, hey, we need to just rest for a second. I went on, laid down on my bed and I had this, you know, one of those big, Eye, eye things eye pillows and put that on my eyes and I fell fast asleep for 15 minutes can't remember the last time I just had a little nap probably when I was a baby in the in the middle of the day and it was so great but usually I would have pushed through that and go no I've got to do something else I've got to do something else I've got to do something else how many of you are pushing through each day in order to maintain the conflict with your body and everything at that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it Right and on, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, COVID's and beyonds. Yeah, and look, I don't really want to go down that whole food thing into detail as well. I will on my Hello Bodies three-month membership. And you know what? That's what I'm also inviting all of you guys to is in beginning of December, I'm doing three months of, of it's called Hello Bodies and um, three-month membership. Uh, and I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. And I think so is my body as well. Because there's then there becomes this request that I have with my body during this membership too that we all get to contribute and be with each other and I'm sure we'll be talking about you know foods and things like that too and there is so much information I found out about gluten since then too um, because it where does it come from you know like the the wheat and everything too and it's different than Italy to Australia to America and all of that so and your body knows that's the thing your body knows. Your body knows, your body knows, your body knows, your body knows. And I'm not so sure where we brought this friggin' program to choose from conflict and not be in communion. 
But what if we could choose from being in communion for the rest of your life on this planet with this beautiful, amazing body? And everything that that is, times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, provids and beyond. So what if you decided would happen if you're in total communion with your body? And everything at that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it. Now Diana said danger. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, provids and beyonds. So if you have something that pops up, you can write it in the chat thread or you might just energetically have something that's not cognitive. But what if you decided would happen if you're in total communion with your body? And everything at that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, provids and beyonds. Yeah, no more fighting. But you, but you know that, right? But you don't choose it. You'd gain vitality. So you'd be out of control. Yeah, and how many of you are actually asking to be out of control or would you rather be in control and be in conflict? So everything at that is times a good selling where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, provids and beyonds. And Radina wrote that she would die, um, that I would die as there would be nothing more to achieve. I know. This is like the insane points of view is what will lock you up. So my point of view was that I would be bored if I was in total communion with my body. That's insane. And recently, because I ended up in hospital and I was meant to go to Italy, facilitate a class and then go to Maestro with um, Dr. Dan here. And it was two days afterwards that I was meant to go. So I cancelled my ticket, but I still knew I could still go. I could go five or six days later. Like, let's rest now and let's see what shows up. So I was in question and very grateful for Gary and Dane because they were both being so in allowance of what I was choosing, et cetera. And I said to Gary, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to amalgamate it because I can hear myself, like the being, you know, we spoke before about body and being, my being was like, I want to go to Maestro. I want to go see Dane. I want to go to class. I, I would like to see all the my friends, all the people I know there. I w- I'd like to hug their bodies, their amazing bodies, rather than just seeing them on Zoom. You know, I want to go speak Italian. I want to go to Italian restaurants and drink great wine and all of this. You know, that's what I would like. And I could literally hear my body loud and clear going, are you fucking kidding me? It was like, you know, when you have two people having a conversation and I was like, well, hang on, hang on. Like, like, just, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Give it a couple of days, you know? And that's what I was like inflicting upon my body. So I, and every day I was waking up asking and I was getting the same energy. And I was asking, what would it take to choose from being in total communion with my body? Not choosing against, not choosing from conflict, being in total communion. I had no idea what, how, what this would show up like. But I was in question. And that's the important piece, guys. You've got to start from being in question, not going to conclusion. Okay. So, and be that relaxation in everything you ask. So I was like day three or something, I woke up and I was still in bed and I had this huge sense of peace about me. Just peace and joy. And I went, oh, I'm not going to Italy. And it was not from being upset not from creating trauma and drama, not from, you know, going to the judgment or that I'm losing out or it's a limitation. It was a choice for a greater possibility. How often do you choose for a choice for a greater possibility? There is so much more that's available, so much more that's available. And this beautiful, sweet, phenomenal, amazing body that you chose is so ready for it, (laughs) are you. And everything at that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, provids and beyonds. There was something somebody set up here too that I wanted to address. Yeah, and Rachel Silver said, I truly wonder what my body is capable of that I've never imagined. You know, the interesting thing is we go to that our, you know, what is our body capable of that you can't imagine? 
So how many of you go to something that is outside of like a an extreme, an intense something, has the intensity to it? What if your body is capable of relaxation that you've never chosen? Like someone said to me recently, what do you do when you, and this was their wording, right? What do you do when you're, you know, anxious or there's something going on, right? And so, and I went, I said, I'd get my bars run and I had to explain what bars was. And if you don't know what bars is, it's a hands-on process. There's 32 different points on your head. And I highly recommend getting your bars run if you have no idea what it is, or if you do get your bars run, but you know what I'm talking about. And the 32 different points on your head and just starts to eliminate and delete all of the, the crap, the shit that you have around so many different topics, right? So I said to him, I'd get my bars run. I'd take myself out of nature, like go for a hike or a walk on the beach or even just go outside into my veranda and say hello to all my plants. Or, you know, I might go and put some music on and, and cook. And I do, and I named all these things. And he said, they're all action. And I was like, yeah, like, hello, don't you do action all the time? And I realized that I was not asked, I was still not asking my body. It was like, that would give me a sense of peace. It would give me a sense of freedom, maybe give me a sense of joy, you know, all of that. But what if I actually just chose this relaxation from a different space? So that's what I've been um, practicing as well in the last, you know, week or so is when I can hear my body go, hey, we need to take a moment. Because living in Australia, you wake up and everybody's awake, Europe and, and America. So, you know, everyone's like, are you awake? There's a billion different threads. There's a billion different people desiring of you. And then there's this lull in the day. But then, you know, Europe starts to wake up at about our three o'clock in the afternoon. But I'm learning to go, oh, actually, body, like I said to you, do you want to just lie down for 15 minutes? I would have judged the hell out of that before or just gone, that's ridiculous. I can keep going. How many of you have this energy of I can keep going? Because you've judged that that means you'd be lazy. You're not lazy. That's a word that is thrown around in order to limit you. So everything that that is times a gazillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pot, all names, shorts, boys, probits and beyonds. I just wanted to address someone up here is asking about their weight gain. Um... That I've been using access consciousness tools for 22 years. And a lot of the time, including myself too, went through a stage of gaining weight. And a lot of the times when people do a lot of access classes, I hear them go, I've gained weight. But here's a couple of things that I would ask you to ask your body too is, are you eating to fill up the space? Because as you use access consciousness tools, there's more space in your world. Are you comfortable with the space? Or are you trying to fill it with a conclusion or with food? Like even if you look at it, next time you're in a room with people and people are having conversations, how often do people allow silence, allow space? Same thing with like your body and eating. How often do you allow your body just to have that space? So everywhere that you've been entrained, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks are important and you must eat rather than be in question with your body where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, probits, and beyonds. Even, you know, we talk about in access consciousness, a lot of the work we do is, um, you know, your body might require more salt, more sugar, more water, okay? more bars, when you do crave sugar or salt, notice when your body is done. Instead of eating this whole box of candy or this whole big packet of crisps, does your body just want one or two? Or maybe it just wants some salt in the palm of your hand and straight up. Maybe it just wants a little packet of sugar straight up, you know? It's like, but it's all about being in question. Okay, body, show me how you'd like to receive the salt. Body, show me how you'd like to receive the sugar. And everything at that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all names, shorts, boys, probits and beyonds. Yeah, just looking at the side. Okay, so 
how many projections, expectations, and judgments do you have of your body in regards to movement that keeps you in a constant state of separation so you can reject your body? And everything that that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. <clears throat> right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. I mean, how many of you have decided what movement is the correct movement for your body? Like, I mean, even the comments here on the side. So here's what I'm going to ask you. If you're commenting on the side, what if you destroyed and uncreated what your point of view is? So many people have a judgment about sugar. Why do you have a judgment about sugar? Either ask your body, yes or no, okay? If you had no judgment, what would you choose? Judgment is a limitation, okay? Stop, like, stop judging you, your body, what somebody else is eating. It's like anything. It's like if you had no judgment, what we can create here in, in, on this planet is phenomenal. Imagine a world with no judgment. I know. If you know what bars are, one of the bars is called hopes and dreams. I often think I need my hopes and dreams bars run with how I would like to see the world because <laughs> we have to choose it, okay? And it literally starts with you. So if you're, um, you know, i got to find my amazing oracle here. So how many projections? Because you have these projections. And a lot of the times, like, the projections could be verbal and they could be from somebody else or they could be, you know, just an energetic projection, Okay. So how many projections, expectations, and judgments do you have of your body in regards to movement that keeps you in a constant state of separation with your body so you can reject it? And everything that that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs, and beyond. Wow, it's got a lot of energy to it, apparently a lot. So let me run it again. So how many projections, expectations, and judgments do you have of your body in regards to movement that keeps you in a constant state of separation with your body so you can reject it? And everything that that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs, and beyonds. And you're all different, okay? You're all different. So stop trying to be the same as anybody else. And what if you destroyed and uncreated the way you've currently been functioning so you can include what you've been judging? Now, what does that mean? Well, for example, it's like, for me, it's like, I'm, if you know me, it's like, I can be quite intense, right? And it's like a lot of things in the way I choose has been from intensity. Even like when I... I don't know, when I moved my body, it's like I studied martial arts for years. I was like third in my state for fighting. It's like, you know, when I work out, it's like you would do lift a weight and go to get your, you know, your personal best. It's like um, love it when you work out and, you know, you're hot and sweaty. It's like get your sweat on, right? So for years, that's how I would look at it, okay? And over the years, it's like I've discovered different uh, many years ago, my Pilates instructor asked me, what is it that you're asking for with your body? And for years, for years, I would ask to change the size and the shape of my body, right? So it was always about weight, always. And then somewhere in my world, I went, this is not actually creating anything greater because I'm in constant judgment of the weight of my body, the size and shape of my body. What if I just played with this and I just let that go, you know? And then I did that thing of, you know, when you sit down and you make a noise when you get up and you're like, ah, oh, you know, and I went, oh my God, I'm making old people noises. <laughs> I don't want to make old people noises. So when my Pilates instructor asked me, what is it I was asking for? I really looked at the question and I'm going to ask you guys, what is it you're asking for with your body? And so for me, I went, you know what? I would like flexibility and strength. So when I am standing up from a chair, I'm not having to lean on something or make a noise, you know, it's like I would like flexibility and strength. And when I asked for that and I started looking at different things and of course, being on stage and things like that a lot too, you're sitting on a chair the whole time. So the way the body works, your hamstrings would, would you know, 
be less, like they, they, they get tighter because you're sitting. And I started noticing that. So I was like, okay, I started Googling like what stretches can I do for my hamstrings? And then I started finding all these different things that was interesting. That wasn't this big workout where I'm like sweating and everything. It was, but wow, I was like, my body is becoming so much more flexible. And then building on the strength as well. And the interesting thing is I started to lose weight when I gave up the point of view that I should lose weight. So how many of you are creating that conflict with your body and projecting at it what it should do rather than being in question? And everything that that is times a gazillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and on good and bad, pock and pot all nine shores, boys, proverbs and beyonds. And yeah, I love it. Dance facilitating. I love putting music on in the house and dancing. It's like, that's movement. Like, what is your body asking for? So, and one of the stories that, um, that, uh, like, this is where I gained awareness as well. In Pilates one time, I hurt my shoulder and Gary said to me, I was talking to him and he said, don't tell me it was fun. <laughs> and I got so annoyed because I was like, what do you mean? Don't tell you it's fun. He said, every time you go to this is fun, you need to stop. It's like, what? I need to stop every time I'm having fun with my body. And I got so angry and so cranky. But I looked at it and went, okay, what the hell is he talking about here? And I realized, like I was in Pilates doing wall handstands, okay? And I was having fun with it. My body was doing them. And I even my Pilates instructor said, hey, are you done? And I went, no, I'm just going to do one more because this is so much fun. The second I went to this is so much fun, I came out of question. My body was done, didn't want to do anymore. And then I hurt my shoulder. So how often do you, like you're, you're having a movement and then maybe there's, it's like drinking a glass of wine. You take two sips and it tastes amazing. The third sip tastes like shit. Stop. If you're going for a run and 10 minutes is just like, wow, this is awesome. Yay. This is amazing. And then there's no joy. Stop. Even ask, okay, body, do you want to skip? Have you, I mean, how recently have you skipped? Skipping is hilarious. You know, when kids do, used to do it all the time, go outside and ask your body if it wants to skip, you know? And recently I've been walking a lot because with this information, with my body and training these different muscles in my body and from question, absolutely from question, I will put my gym clothes on in the morning and then a couple of days it's like nothing. I keep tapping in going, because I have a great gym downstairs. Do you want to go do some Pilates? Nope. Do you want to go for a walk? Nope. Okay. Nothing today. You know, just moving around the house and doing whatever. And there's a national park near me and it's not a big hill at all, especially from Australia. But usually I would go there and the first thing I would do is walk to the top of the hill. And instead I've discovered three new paths where I'm like walking, right? So ask your body and I'm like, body, tell me when you want to turn back. You don't have to keep going. And I'm noticing that my body is like, hey, let's go back now. Okay, cool. Let's go back. It's like, what if you became in question with your body for what movement it's asking for? Maybe it does just want to dance to a couple of songs. And guess what? You don't even have to complete the song. Like, I really want you to start having a look at that. Like, notice the insanity of it. I mean, even if you're on a dance floor, how often did you go on a dance floor and you would have to... you'd come, dance till completion oh, what if you dance until your body is done and everything that that is times a godzilla we destroy and uncreate it right and on good and bad pock and pot all known shorts boys proverbs and beyonds i did this session the other day it's like three minutes of stretching your toes like putting your fingers between your toes and then just like with your feet and moving your feet back and forward and your ankles and stuff and I was like, God, my whole body was just revitalized from me doing a three minute, like just movement of my toes. So everywhere that you've decided this is going to be hard work to actually be in communion with your body, because that's what, that's what I notice with people and notice with myself, where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and on, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, poets and beyonds, and Rachel, brilliant, 10 seconds at a time, everything, 10 seconds at a time. This 10 seconds, what am I going to choose? Next 10 seconds, what can I choose? And if it's not joyful, stop. So I want to do a little, 
I should have probably spoken about this at the beginning, but anyway, because you've or if you've noticed, you've already changed the energy with your body right now. Okay. So here's what I would like you to look at. I mean, I'd love you guys to all join my Hello Bodies membership if you choose. But there's enough tools in here also that you can take these tools away and you can start playing. Please do that. Do it for you. Do it for your body. Okay. Do it because you would like to. Okay, this is the scenario I want to walk you through. The doorbell knocks. You open the door, it's your body. How do you greet it? How did you greet your body this morning? Were you an absolute bitch to it? Did you judge it? Like, how did you treat your body? Have you decided you're going to starve it today? Have you already told it the rules and regulations? Have you told it how it's going to move today? Have you told it what it's going to eat or not eat or drink or not drink? How does it look? How did you greet it? You've got a big ass. Your penis is not big enough. It's too small. It's whatever. Your boobs are too big. They're too small. Oh, my God, your hair, everything. How did you greet it? And every everything that that is and everything that that brought up, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Right now, good and bad. Pock and pot all nine shorts, boys, privates, and beyonds. I love it. Holly wrote, today I looked in the mirror and said, hello, beautiful. And I smiled and I got a smile back. I love that. <laughs> and I got a smile back. Yay. <laughs> hello. Good mirror. Um, so what? how would you like to greet your body every morning? There was a thing I saw a reel on Instagram recently and it was so cute. It was, um, if I can find it, I'll try and find it and put it in the Telegram thread. This interview with all these kids, right, these young kids, and the guy says, if there was one thing that you could change in your body, what would you change? And all these kids are like, like you can see them going, like, I don't understand the question. And they're like, what? So if I asked you, if there's one thing in your body you'd like to change, what would you change? can pretty much guarantee you, you all, you all go, one, can I have three? Can I have five? And these kids are like looking at Addie, like, what? And then by the end of it, oh, my God, it was so cute. Like some of them were like, I don't want to change anything. Or they're like, I would like to have, you know, um, like a mermaid tail or I'd like to have wings or, you know, I'd like to have, like it became this magical scenario of what they're asking for. There was nothing wrong with their body. So I love it. Tiffany would like to have a towel. See, I'd like to have wings. I have streams all the time that I'm flying and I'd love just to be able to have, and I always call my scapula, I call them my wings. And it's like, if I could just have these big, beautiful wings just out of my scapula every time I want and just fly, that's what I'd ask for. But what if you could have that magic? And what if there was nothing wrong with your body? There was no people on the planet. Would you have a problem with your body? Everything at that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it. I love it. Tiffany's like, I have wings too. Okay, tail and wings. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine shorts, boys, probits and beyonds. Well, the other thing I used to really like too was, I don't know if you had Aquaman. It was like I grew up with it. it was one of those, you know, superhero things, but he would swim underwater and he'd have webbed hands and, and feet so he could swim really fast underwater, that'd be cool too. You notice how like there's this joy in that rather than, oh, I really need my ass not to be as big or I need to be two sizes down or, you know, I need to, ah, oh, this pain, I've got to get, you know, this pain, I've got to get rid of this pain or, you know, oh, I wish my nose wasn't this big or, you know, my eyes or my ear, you know, anything. Stop complaining about your body, okay? Start treating it like your best friend. Like I said at the beginning, this is the only thing that's with you morning, noon, and night for the rest of your life. You don't get a new body this lifetime, okay? This is it. Are you enjoying it? Please start enjoying it. Please, please start enjoying your body. Everything it doesn't allow you to enjoy your body, even just like a little bit today, like just 5% more than you did yesterday, okay? Will you destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, privates and beyonds. And what if, like, what did you choose a body for in this lifetime 
to be born at this time on planet Earth? What do you know? We all chose to be born here in these beautiful, amazing bodies at this time. What do you know? What are you here for? And, you know, I love, the part I love about Zoom and doing calls online is how many different people we have here. Ages, you know, how many different ages, how many different cultures, how many different religions, how many different countries there are represented here. And you all chose to be born in this body, wherever you chose to be born, you chose it. What did you choose it for? And are you using it to the greatest of your ability? Everything at that is times a good zillion. We destroy and uncreate it. I love it. United colors of consciousness. Ooh, we got to write, send that to me. I like that. We need to do something with that, Rachel. I love that. United colors of consciousness. Yes. And everything at that is times a good zillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shores, boys, providence, and beyonds. You are so welcome for this call. You're so welcome. And Right now, okay, here's, let's let's finish off this call with putting your hands on your body again, okay? Your body's here again. It's like, hi, you are not inside your body, okay? Please stop shoving the being inside the body. Your body is, ma your, your body is here. Your being is massive. It's across the entirety of the world, okay? But your sweet body is here and it so wants to take care of you. It so desires to be in communion with you, okay? So, Hi, body. Can you just say thank you? Thank you for being here. I'm so grateful for you, body. And I'm so sorry that I've judged the shit out of you for so long. And everything that that is, is I will do my absolute best to never do that again. Right and wrong, good and bad. Pock and pot all nine shorts, boys, providence and beyonds. Please help me to help me to listen to you and be in total communion with you and not choose from conflict and be total relaxation. And everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, providence and beyonds. And if you do nothing else, put the next clearing I'm going to give you on a loop, okay? What energy, space, consciousness, choice, magic, miracles, mysteries, possibilities, power and potency can you and your bodies be that would allow you to be in total communion and in total relaxation for all eternity with ease, joy, and glory. And everything that that is times a godzillion, where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, providence and beyonds. And everything you've been avoiding and defending by not choosing to be in total communion, everywhere that you've thought that is, that is the better choice, for whatever insane point of view you have, where you destroy and uncreate it. Times a good saying, right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pot all nine, shorts, boys, providence and beyonds. Damn, buddies. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Every morning, wake up when you're in bed still and just be like, hi, 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 hi. So I want to thank you guys so much for being here and the translators, you are freaking amazing. Thank you so much. Um, just in case you guys missed the meet and greet at the beginning, I think we're just going to put up here, we've got... So I have this um, membership coming up called Hello Bodies. You can go to simonemillisses.com forward slash Hello Bodies. Oh, you know what? I just want to, this photo, I love this photo. This was um, somewhere in Queensland that I went and this chair is like this beautiful place that we'd go hiking all around there. And the way they've set up this chair from a tree, you swing out on it and you're like, you've got this whole area underneath you that that is nothing there and it's just like so amazing and so beautiful and for me that was a moment where I was totally and utterly enjoying the total presence that you can have with your body now again you don't have to be running a million miles an hour to enjoy the total presence go and go skipping on a swing dance lie down with a, a pillow over your eyes and and just breathe you know enjoy your breath enjoy everything it can be intense it can be this intensity of relaxation it can just be relaxation it can be everything okay so it's a three-month playground of possibilities 
Um, years ago, I would have absolutely freaked out if somebody was saying to me, can you do a, a call on, on bodies? Because it was the one thing that I judged so much. You know, I can talk about business. I can talk about money. I can talk about all of these different things, but no, but bodies now it's like, let's come play. So this is what you get in it too. You get a, a call with me every two weeks. Um, we get a private group that you join so that we can all contribute to each other. Cause that's the one thing I really do love playing with everybody is it's not just me contributing to you, you contribute to me. And then you also contribute to each other. And then we have some random, um, you know, surprise gift, um, gifts and also some guests. Um, we're going to be doing like these energetic group sessions together. That's like a bit like SOP, ESB and whatever it is that we be. There's also some hot seats, which a hot seat is a private session that there's, you put your name into, we'll give you some time and date. So if you're available, put your name in and literally it's pulled out of a hat sort of thing. And there'll be five private sessions and those private sessions, everybody can watch. <laughs> it sounds so voyeuristic, but it sort of is, but it's interesting because so many people receive from your vulnerability and your desire and willingness to change as well. So um that's what you get it starts on the 6th of december us time 7th of december um in australia so if you want to join and it's a really good price and if you have attended a three-day body class you get an even better price so i have no idea where you find that code though does anyone in my coin know those details of when you register and if you've done a three-day body class you get and if you're if you're a certified facilitator or bars facilitator you also get a better price as well. So thank Being you so much. Only only mail uh, with the code, the coupon code, so they can check in their emails. Okay. With, so you would have received an email ages ago if you have that, or if you have any questions too, you can send an Just email to us. Yeah. At, is it customer service? What's the email address, Kat? Yeah, customer service at simonsmilosos.com. Okay, and we'll put that in the Telegram thread too. And you know what? You, I would like, like I said, I'd love you to come play. If you don't come play, that's okay. Use these tools, okay? There are so many tools in this call alone that you can start to use. I would like you to have the greatest possibility you can here in this lifetime on planet Earth. There's how many thousands of years have you been asking for more consciousness? Is now the time to actually choose this, to just leap off that that um, that cliff and let's fly, you know, because i got wings on my scapula, okay? Tiffany's got her tail. <laughs> it's like, let's go. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you, body. Thank you, being. And I'll see you somewhere in the world no matter what, okay? We're in this together. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure to hit the follow or subscribe button on your favorite listening platform to get notified of new episodes. We read all the reviews, so if there's any topic you would like to hear about, let us know. If you'd like to know more about the tools, information, and classes mentioned in the podcast, head on over to simonemillises.com and follow me on Instagram at simonemillises or the podcast has its very own link on Instagram at choice, change, and action. Don't forget, you can download the show notes. And lastly, have way too much fun today.